Hello, hello, and thanks for stopping by. This is Vanguard for the Atari 2600, and it was published by Atari in 1982. I'm playing the game from a cartridge on a Retron 77 with the latest Stella firmware update. Vanguard was a staple in my Atari collection when I was a kid in the early 80s. It's an Atari shoot 'em up in outer space, and you pilot a ship that can shoot in four different directions. I used to play this game a lot before Nintendo came out, and I remember a very specific commercial that used to run this game back in the day. For anyone that was around back then, the commercial was a bunch of friends playing a game together, and they handed off the controller after someone finished each stage. The last stage is the boss level, where you fight the main boss. It's a creature called the Gond. The memorable phrase from the commercial was, Who destroys the Gond? Luther destroys the Gond. And then they hand the controller to Luther, who finishes off the game. Like most Atari games, it's a simple enough concept. There are a set amount of levels, and if you cycle through all the levels, you get to start again from the beginning and the stages start over. But this time it's faster and basically more difficult. In this game, a tunnel map appears at the start of the game, showing you that you're on level 1, and it also displays between each stage to let you know how far you've actually progressed. Then of course, here the game starts. There are a total of 6 stages, and then there's a boss battle, and the boss battle is something you can end remarkably quick. The first stage is a side-scroller. It's called the Mountain Zone, and you basically just shoot everything you can to protect yourself, and you get points along the way. Let's talk about shooting. That's sort of the main part of the game. In this game, by default, the fire button does just the opposite of what you think it would do. In this case, it stops you firing. You're naturally going to be firing straight ahead the whole time. But if you move the joystick in one direction, up, down, left, right, you not only move in that direction, but you also shoot in that direction as well. This allows you to shoot in all four directions, but there are no angles when you shoot. When you press the fire button, you actually stop firing. And I know what you're thinking, why would I ever want to stop firing? Well, when you press the button and you stop firing, you can actually maneuver your ship faster, and you can dodge better. You can use the difficulty settings to adjust how the trigger works if you really want the trigger to fire, but I always just leave it on default. This shooting scheme leads most people to play a fair portion of the game simply swirling the joystick 360 degrees, trying to shoot as much as possible. On the first stage, you'll occasionally see a square, and it has an E in the center. This is an energy pod, and if you touch it, this Vanguard music starts playing, and at that point your ship stops firing, it glows all these different colors, and now you're invincible. Here you just start flying around and run into everything you can find. If you've not played the game before, and trust me on this one, this is the fun part. It lasts for about 10 seconds. It's interesting to note the jingle that plays. Um, apparently, it is said to be an arrangement of the song from the Flash Gordon movie from the early 80s. The other thing that is important to be aware of is the meter at the bottom of the screen. It's supposed to represent your fuel, and if it runs out, your ship will just magically descend and crash. To fill up your fuel, you just have to shoot enemies. It basically forces you to get out there and shoot things instead of just dodging all the time. You'll see this function be more important when you finally loop the game for the first time. The faster scrolling is going to make you want to dodge more, but then it's going to make this become more important to keep that meter full. Stage 2 is the downward scroller, and it's called the Rainbow Zone, and you just need to shoot the balloons until they stop coming. When you get to the third stage, it's called the Stick Zone, and it's just like the first level, but there are no energy pods to pick up. The fourth stage is another Rainbow Zone, but you're facing upwards instead of down this time. You just gotta shoot all the obstacles, and when they're all gone, you'll advance. The fifth stage, we're back to scrolling upwards, and you have to choose a left or right path as you're traveling. Each one is a little different. You'll have energy pods if you take the right path, and they're pretty useful if you can grab them. The sixth stage is another rainbow zone. You just shoot everything that moves until you advance. And when you get to the seventh, it's called the bleak zone, and this is sort of different. There are these curly snakes that sort of fly up from beneath you on the screen. You can run into them three times, and... They'll protect your ship, actually, for a few seconds and give you bonus points, but you can only do that three times, and then the fourth time they'll just crush your ship. So, basically, when you hit this level, you get to collect bonus points three times, and then you just need to shoot everything. The last stage is called the City of Mystery. This is where the Gond is, and he's this creature at the top of the screen. Basically, just shoot him and be done with it. You can end this level really quick if you want. If you wait to shoot, you'll actually get more bonus points, but you'll also have to start dodging incoming fire. I usually end this stage pretty quick. I just push the joystick up to fire, and then the stage is over. And then, of course, the game starts over again, and now we're on level two. At this stage, it's kind of almost a different game. The levels move faster, and they are in a different order than the first level. 
I mean, you've seen all the different stages by this time of the game, but you're just repeating the same tasks over and over again at higher speed and in a different mix-up. It is definitely more difficult in the first run through. The first time you run through it, it's fun and it's almost relaxing, but the subsequent stages, once you've looped it, they're faster and they're more intense. If you beat this level, the game will simply loop back and forth between levels 1 and 2 until you lose all your lives. Also, when you first start on level 1, you can continue the game if you lose all your lives. Um, but after you destroy the Gon the first time, you don't get to continue anymore. Overall, this is a pretty good shooter. It's repetitive, but there are plenty of variables in the enemy types that make the game interesting. Kind of weird, there are some levels that are called the Rainbow Zone and what have you. Um, the truth is, most of the levels are rainbow colors to begin with. Um, and it seems a little odd to me to have such little variation. You do get used to it, though. Honestly, when I picked up my Retron 77, this was one of the first games on my list. Well, that's all for this one. Thanks for stopping by.